I am planning to live abroad once I finish my studies and I feel it is very important to already know some people there. Is that generally the case when people decide to move to another country? So the importance of family and friends uh, abroad has, is quite a robust finding uh, in the migration literature and there's been studies um, from context all over the world, uh, the US, uh, Mexico, Africa, which find that indeed knowing somebody abroad increases your chances to go abroad. Um, and why would that be the case, you could wonder. Um, there's people argue that um, so these ties, these friends and kin um, help you reduce the costs and the uncertainties of migration and also may increase the expected benefits of destination, to use more economics jargon. They can also give you ideas about wishing to move abroad. And not only that, but also which destinations you should go for, what is a good country to go at. So there's both this more economical instrumental role, which goes a lot through actually financing a part of your trip or helping you um, get a job or, or a house at destination, as well as this more subtle cultural um, influence um, on your own aspirations. And there's some cultures where we talk of a culture of migration that is instated in those countries of origin, for example, where migration becomes a norm uh, in, um, in reality and people feel that in order to become men, especially if those countries are in a more patriarchal uh, type of uh, division of labor, um, you need to go abroad. Um. However, having said that, um, there's also, and that's where I feel more research is needed, not all ties are similarly influential and also ties don't matter in the same way for different types of people. So you're, you're a student, you're telling me that you'd like to find a job abroad and actually research has shown that for people like you who are educated, networks, at least these types of family and friendship networks, are le less important because you have other types of capital that you can draw on. You can find your information by yourself on the internet. You can have some, probably also your family background may be a little bit more um, a higher class and you might have more financial capital than people who are less educated or less qualified. You need to also consider the resources that these people, your friends and family at destination have. Material resources, financial capital, um, other, their, mm, other, their own social capital for their own. So you can't expect social capital to, to work wonders uh, beyond its material resources. Um, again, to draw on my own work, um, I found that uh, the Senegalese migrants um, that, I, that I was focusing on in my thesis, uh, those who go to France, um, for them, networks help them get a better job than those who don't have networks. So those who had friends and family there do better in terms of the job that they can find. The Senegalese that go to Italy and, S and Spain, uh, which, is, which are other important destinations for them, um, for them the networks only lead them to a more precarious form of activity, um, uh, uh, precarious forms of self-employment and a lot street selling or other small commercial activities. Um, and that is because I think, so my interpretation is in France, uh, the Senegalese community is quite resourceful. Um, is very well established. It's been it's a very long-term migration flow from France to Senegal. It was a former colony. It's quite diverse. There's a lot of students, professionals. Uh, so hence, I would say more resourceful. So countries in general really prefer international students as a channel for attracting highly skilled migration. And a lot of this global battle for brains is focused on international students in particular. Uh, because in this way you not only attract skill and brains, but you can also assimilate it in a way. So you have a locally trained, um, socially and culturally assimilated and also very skilled labor force. However, um, more recently, there are some countries, um, for example, the UK or France, uh, which have moved away or have tried to move away from um, facilitating, especially this transition between in uh, studies in the 
particular country of destination uh, and moving to, a, to get a job which for many students is quite important, uh, even in, if they want to return to their origin countries, having some professional experience in destination will allow them to, do a, to have a better return to those origin countries. These policies are quite recent, um, and there's not been a lot of academic interest so far in the issue. And what has been done reaches quite contrasting findings um, and mixed, um, yeah, mixed results, but mostly are based on lack of accurate data. Mm -hmm. So at Oxford, uh, at the International Migration Institute, where I'm a researcher currently, we try to fill this gap uh, by conducting, so by collecting a lot of data, both of on immigration policies and on immigration flows. We managed to do that for around 20 countries and the main important thing that we need to consider is to try to find such data which is disaggregated by skill. Mm -hmm. So we know exactly among this immigration flow what is its composition, how many are skilled, how many are lower skilled, in order to really be able to evaluate uh, the impact of policies. These data, so the analyses are currently being conducted, um, so we don't have any findings yet, but we also, um, I'm also carrying out in parallel a more micro-level study. So I went at, um, um, I'm focusing on academics actually around the world and students, um, and I'm doing both a quantitative survey uh, as well as qualitative interviews. And the findings from that part of our study show that at least academics um, and students don't really consider policies uh, when they make their destination decisions. They don't, uh, they are not informed about them um, and they consider that other factors such as the prestige of the institution, the reputation of, their, uh, of the particular center where they want to go in the subfield that they're working on, these are the factors that motivate their decisions. A number that I think it's nice to, um, to evoke more um, is, uh, for example, 1.3 million is the number of um, graduates from the UK who leave the UK to find foreign employment abroad. So it's the brain drain stock from the UK, which in 2000 was on top of the, all the countries. So we usually think of India, China, or other countries, developing countries, as having a real brain drain issue. Uh, and I think it will help if we also consider it less of a problem as a normal circulation of brains. Uh.